It's just heartbreaking because they're really good people. Family and friends honor two young women killed in a horrific fiery crash. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price and I'm Alicia Summers. Utter heartbreak after Wednesday night's crash in the college area. Both women were taken to the hospital with severe burn injuries. One was pronounced dead six hours later. The other died from her injuries yesterday. News 8's Heather Hope has the huge outpouring of support from a growing memorial near the scene. Yes, and you can see the outpouring of support of so many balloons, flowers and candles, all in honor of Kiana and Casey, who lost their lives at this very intersection at just 22 years old. And they were just sitting at a light and the Mercedes just they didn't even see it coming. Dropping off flowers and candles for her best friend's daughter, Casey Hargis. Joanne Goss was at a loss for her goddaughter. Who's going to change the world? 22-year-olds <laughs> Casey Hargis and Kiana Taylor, best friends, were near the 70th and El Cajon intersection from getting food Wednesday night, September 9th, when the unthinkable happened. San Diego police say a speeding driver ran a red light in the college area. The, the dad of Casey saw the video. It looked like he was going about... He had a medical condition about 120 miles per hour. Surveillance video by Greek smoke shop owner Tony shows the fiery crash before he ran out to help pull the women out. And it sent them into the other lane, but when he hit them, the car burst into flames. Nick Hanshaw was a witness. And we heard the screams from the two passengers inside screaming the to get me out, get me out. Hanshaw says both women were severely burned. At least six people were injured and taken to hospitals. Tony is the true hero who got them out of a burning car. At a makeshift memorial at 70th and El Cajon, it says sweet angels rest in peace. It's unreal. Classmates since La Mesa Middle School and Helix High School paid their respects. They were just loved by so many people. I had so many people tell me that Kiana was like the first person to talk to them in middle school. Leaving heartfelt notes saying once a Scotty, always a Scotty for the two Highlanders. Salma Silva just saw Kiana. I didn't know that was going to be my last time seeing her. I just wish I talked a little bit more to both of them. Kiana just graduated San Diego State in May in psychology. Her big sister, Nisa Taylor, says Kiana lived life to the fullest. Close friends Oriana and Jennifer were planning to be in each other's weddings. Casey was the head of her Alpha Phi sorority at Cal State Northridge. That the family is besides themselves, and with COVID, only 25 people can go to the funeral. Casey's funeral is planned for Monday afternoon. Kiana's is still being decided. To their best of friends since they were five, they're together now in heaven. As the huge outpouring of support at this makeshift memorial continues, if you'd like to help out the family with funeral expenses, we've posted a link on our website, cbs8.com. Just click on the help button. Heather Hope, News 8. So tragic, Heather. Thank you. A car slammed into a pedestrian in Chula Vista. The victim later died from his injuries. Happened around 930 last night near 3rd Avenue in Main Street. The man was rushed to the hospital after being hit by a car, but later died from his injuries. Police say the driver involved did stop at the scene and is cooperating with the investigation, which is still ongoing at this time. The victim's name has not been released. Police need your help finding the person who attacked a disabled elderly woman in downtown San Diego last night. Officers say they received a 911 call just after 10 Friday night and found the victim with severe trauma to her upper body at the corner of 4th Avenue and B Street. She was rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery. Witnesses saw a man fighting with the victim who is homeless and requires a walker. He is described as black in his 40s, approximately 6 feet tall, weighing about 250 pounds, wearing a white tank top and blue blue jeans at the last time anyone saw him. He was last seen walking eastbound on 400 C Street. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers. As crews continue to work hard to contain the Valley Fire, recovery efforts are now underway. The county opened a temporary local assistance center to help residents affected by the fire. News 8's Teresa Sardina reports from the center in El Cajon. Steve and Alicia, the assistance center is set up here at the county library's Rancho San Diego branch. There's plenty of support staff to help those impacted by the Valley Fire. I started gathering up a backpack of clothes and my dog and it seemed about 10 minutes later it like quadrupled in size. Single father Joshua Havens of Hidden Glen in Hopkinsville Valley lost his home in the Valley Fire. 
Havens and Buddy are currently staying with family. So what is your plan right now? I know it's been a one full week. My plan is to gather a plan. He stops at the local assistance center in El Cajon, set up by the county to inquire about financial help and to get information about his property he hopes to rebuild. Several agencies providing services to help residents recover from the fire. And they're here to provide help on anything from getting food assistance, uh, financial assistance. Maybe they need help removing debris from their property um, on the rebuilding process. And we have crisis counseling. Cal Fire giving residents Saturday's Valley Fire update. Uh, the fire is 17,665 acres. Uh, we have uh, the fire uh, destroyed 30 structures that were habitable and other minor structures uh, destroyed was 31. What you right here is containment line according to what you see right here. Mm -hmm. Uh, 69% contained. So. While Havens was getting assistance, he set up his GoFundMe page. It still seems surreal, you know, it seems like it's not happening. It's like a dream. I started like finding myself stalling, you know, trying to figure out what's more important, you know, and so I grabbed a few pictures off the wall. And Havens says he's always prepared to evacuate, but he needs to work on his recovery plan and continue to stay positive. Just kind of pull off of his power, you know. I mean, he's like a strong dog and he seems to endure all sorts of things. The local assistance center will be open again tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Monday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. We'll have all the information to help those impacted by the Valley Fire at CBS8.com. Reporting in El Cajon, Steve and Alicia. And News 8 is teaming up with the San Diego Foundation to raise money for those affected by the Valley Fire. If you'd like to contribute, you can text the word DONATE to 858-571-8888. Once again, 858-571-8888. Your generosity will make a huge difference in the lives of those impacted. And in the Talmadge area, San Diego fire quickly knocked down a small brush fire. It started after two this afternoon off Fairmont Avenue. Firefighters had it out within minutes, burning less than an acre. According to fire officials, it may have been started by homeless people. Fire conditions have gotten better, but what's in store for the days ahead? Meteorologist Sean Stiles joins us now with a first look at your microclimate forecast. And Sean, I didn't really notice how bad the smoke was until I looked up at the sun. And then all of a sudden you think... <laughs> Wow. It, yeah. I mean, it is bad out there. It is. And take a look at this time lapse. This is from uh, the northern part of San Diego County, Booker Hill, looking southward. And look at the smoke in the atmosphere. These are some of the higher valleys as you make your way down towards the coastline. And the smoke is being trapped in there by the weak high pressure that is sitting over the southwestern part of the country and winds are not helping out at all. We've got winds coming in from the coast, but then the offshore flow. So as they collide here in the center, it's creating kind of a, a vortex where they're just settling in. So not nearly as bad at the coastline. However, the humidity in the atmosphere is also giving the smoke particulate something to cling to. And so it's really settling in these higher valleys in the East County. As far as air quality, we're looking at atmospheric particulate matter and uh, we're looking at moderate air quality in the high valleys of San Diego. Limit your physical abilities, uh, your physical activities if you smell smoke and stay inside in those areas if you do have problems with breathing. So tomorrow 77 we're heading into a slight warming trend. Nothing dramatic so don't get excited. However 77 is the average 83 so we're going to jump six degrees above average and for you folks in those inland microclimates we're going to head into the mid 90s, so it'll definitely be warming up again, but again, not as hot as it was last week. I'll have your eight day microclimate forecast in just a bit. Today, county officials reported 445 new cases out of more than 8,500 tests, so that's a positive rate of 5%. 32 of the new cases are linked to San Diego State University. So far, the university has 598 total probable and confirmed cases, and about 75% of those are students who live off campus. Four additional deaths were also reported for the county.
We're currently on the second of four reopening tiers under the state's new metrics. Our testing positivity percentage stayed at 4.2%. Our case rate also stayed at the same 69 If that goes any higher, though, the county will have to move down a tier, meaning tighter restrictions and more closures. And for the second night in a row, there will be no action at Petco Park. The Padres game postponed after a member of the visiting San Francisco Giants tested positive for COVID-19. The announcement for Major League Baseball came down just before the first pitch of last night's game. Out of an abundance of caution, both last night and tonight's games are put on hold and no word yet about tomorrow's matchup. Jake Gariani in for John Howard tonight. He's going to have more on this situation coming up in sports. Since the start of the pandemic, nursing homes have been on strict lockdowns, not allowing residents to have any visitors. But now over 40 skilled nursing facilities in San Diego County will be allowed to resume indoor visits, according to a list put out by the California Department of Public Health. There are a few requirements. The nursing home must be able to show new cases in the community have declined. There are no new cases among residents or staff for at least two weeks and that there is adequate staffing and testing available. That is such big news. It is. I mean, this has been heartbreaking for a lot of folks who are, are stuck not being able to see their relatives and just to be near, even if you can't touch them, to give them a hug, just to see them face to face. Oh, it's yeah, gonna make such a big difference. There's hope on the horizon. We just hope. gotta, yes. we just gotta get those requirements met.